So thank you for reminding me. I was going to say good afternoon. I want to welcome you to the start of the 178th year of this space known as St. Mary's. St. Mary's College, a place known as a hidden gem when I arrived. Today, we are an institution on the moon. In 2015, the campus community came together and began the process of reimagining what this institution could be. The result, a strategic plan that I refer to as a foundational strategic plan. It was not openly <coughs> aspirational. That plan was required to get our house in order for bigger and better things. It was indeed a time for rebirth. Who knows what that is? Phoenix. It's a phoenix. That's exactly right. I was so hoping you wouldn't say it's a screwed up sea bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a phoenix. Our vision is to become the college of choice, bar none. The question becomes the college of choice for whom? Well, that's easy. We want to become the college of choice for students and their families. When that happens, you become the college of choice for faculty and staff, and then for graduate and professional schools, and for employers. At the same time, the community in which you reside will consider you a gem because they know that you will be sensitive to their needs while helping to move the entire region to a different level, a higher level. There is none to compare you with. You are the college of choice. <clears throat> to reach that pinnacle requires a lot of work. It is work that cannot be done by a single entity or in silos. Work that requires collegial and respectful collaboration across the entire institution. Last year, we embarked on implementing integrated institutional planning because every unit and everybody has to have skin in the game. Let me say that again. Every unit and everybody must have skin in the game. It's a different concept, a different approach to how things appeared to work in the past. The result of our past behavior or way of business, we did well enough and we're satisfied. But the world caught up and is beginning to pass us by. The integrated institutional planning concept perturbed the system. There was chaos introduced in our system and things appear to be in disarray. And if Chicken Little were here, he would have declared that the sky was falling. But I'm here to tell you that the sky did not fall. We're in the process of reaching a new equilibrium. And in so doing, we have moved the needle in our, and are on our way to doing something that no other college or university, to our knowledge, has been able to do. And we will eventually reach that pinnacle our vision of becoming the college of choice. But let's revisit for a moment the system perturbation. Now that you guys understand that I did this like, I don't know how many minutes ago, Cynthia? Maybe an hour? So it's crude, but you gotta understand the concept, okay? So, we re re revisit the system perturbation concept, because having this aspirin vision to become a college of choice moves us away from the status quo. When a perturbance or catalyst is introduced into a system, things begin to move at a faster rate, and depending on the reaction conditions, some things will fall out of solution, and some might even try to change their state and escape. Others, however, seize the opportunity, use the decreased activation energy, join forces, and move to that different place, change for the better, and establish a new equilibrium. Today, before I tell you about a few of the highlights from the previous semester, I 
want to recognize several individuals who are helping us move to a new place and establish a more favorable equilibrium at St. Mary's College. In his drum major instinct speech, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. explains how we all want to be recognized. And I quote, we all want to be important, to surpass others, to achieve distinction, to lead the parade. This quest for recognition, this desire for attention, this desire for distinction is the basic impulse, the basic drive of human life, this drum major instinct, end quote. The individuals I want to highlight today, a student, two faculty members, and a staff member, are the exact opposite of the drum major, and that they are quietly going about their work based on what is in the best interest of our students, not as the leaders of the parade, but as the individuals who help to orchestrate the score. The first person, who is not here, by the way, but she did send the proxy, is Jada Ward, class of 19. She's a political science major and a music minor. Jada could not be with us due, today due to another commitment she is with us in spirit, always. Jada is a member of the college's commemoration committee, known as ComCom. -Com. Each semester, I find myself inspired by Jada. Her thoughtful questions and her steady presence at campus events make me really see the true potential in all of our young people. Jada spoke at the Board of Trustees meeting in May passionately about what this experience at St. Mary's College means to her, how it has changed her life, the significance of this commemoration project. She helped the board to see the importance of our history. She epitomizes what we love most about our students at St. Mary's College, and I find that we are blessed to have Jada and students like her in our community. Eileen Bailey, professor of psychology, Chair of the Ad Hoc Core Curriculum Committee and Vice Chair of the Core Design Work Group. Eileen completed extensive work over the summer and was there whenever we needed her. Whether it involved a presentation to faculty or a weekend presentation to the Board of Trustees during the summer at their retreat, faculty endorsement of the new vision for the curriculum was a long and at times tough process but I leave quietly when I'm down, working with others to make this dream closer to a reality. Gary Denny, Associate Professor of History, member of the Faculty Center, member of the Ad Hoc Core Curriculum Committee, member of the Core Design Work Group. Dr. Denny is one of several who has worked with Dr. Bailey and others on the various committees to move the vision for the enhanced programming forward. In my view, he is a consummate statesman, one who could be considered the majority whip. You guys know what that is? Yeah, that's exactly right. Able to persuade others to move the agenda forward, always looking for compromise. Joanne Goldwater, Associate Dean for Retention and Student Success. Joanne has been a part of this campus community for more than 20 years. Her commitment to our students is noteworthy. Her efforts in student retention and equity are laudable. She epitomizes a caring and willing spirit who just does whatever is needed to advance the cause. Truly, Jada in absentia and Marion Oshabukola, did I do it right? Yes. Yes. Um, I lost my place. Eileen, Gary, and Joanne are stars among many. Know that we appreciate each of you for all that you do in support of the college. I ask that each of you stand and be recognized by the community, and then please come up and accept a small token of my appreciation for your efforts for what you do for us.
and highlight some of our accomplishments since the January State of the College. To get there, it will matter how we do what we do and when. So I want to talk about how we look. Part of our efforts in integrated institutional planning must focus on how we look, our curve appeal. We realize that effective facilities are instrumental to our ability to recruit and retain students of a high caliber and our vision to become a college of choice. The Jamie L. Roberts Stadium Project and the forthcoming new academic building and auditorium will raise our profile, not only in terms of our students, but also in the surrounding community. This familiarity often leads to interest. The Jamie L. Roberts Stadium construction is underway. How many of you have been past the site? You need to go. <laughs> Do you know where it is? <laughs> On Madison Michael, just look for the dust. It's picked <laughs> up every day. It's very cool. There's, there are lights out there. And they keep moving the piles of dirt. <laughs>
harboring the wealth of experience and expertise, most recently serving at the University of Delaware as Senior Chief Business Officer. Know that he retired from a laudable career in the U.S. Army as Lieutenant Colonel. And so we salute you all and welcome you to the campus. Thank you. 
speaks very nicely to the entrepreneurial spirit and mindset so prevalent in the students of today and tomorrow. And because it is not the major, business will provide the opportunity for virtually any student, regardless of their major, to fit it nicely into their academic program and still, very important to me, graduate on time. We also have a new major in the program of in women and gender studies. And this major is something that the students at the college have wanted for a long time, and I'm happy that the board has approved that. At this time last year on this very stage, I discussed a framework that would integrate the practical and professional skills required for success beyond college across the curriculum for all, not just a few, of St. Mary's College students. And conversations around the state and across the country, current and potential students and their families, policy makers and employers were excited about the concept. Although there was excitement about it, there was doubt that we could pull it off. I am thrilled to inform you that we are a step closer to this vision. In May 2018, the faculty approved a framework that integrates professional and practical skills across the curriculum. And this committee spent the summer working deliberately and diligently to begin to build the structure for the framework. Earlier this afternoon, I acknowledged the significant efforts of Drs. Bailey and Denny in this endeavor. On this slide, you see the names of all of the individuals who have worked hard in getting this vision to reality. It's too many for me to name, but at this time, I want to publicly thank each of you for this tremendous effort, and I look forward to the refinement of this program programming that can be both relevant and distinctive in the higher education sector. Thank you so very much for that effort. Let's talk about enrollment. The staff in both admissions and financial aid, as well as an integrated marketing, have done a tremendous job in bringing in the entering class this year. I would like for all who are present in admissions, financial aid, and integrated marketing to stand up and be recognized for your efforts this year. Here in three years. It has been over six years in methods, kinds of numbers. 
And if you look at their credentials, you see that they're the highest we've had in a very long time. We have an excellent group of new students here. We need to welcome them with open arms and make sure we integrate them into our community and we help them thrive and succeed beyond this place. But these accomplishments that I've talked about just in a very big way have taken the entire campus community working together. The word is getting out The St. Mary's College of Maryland, that hidden gem, is kind of a big deal. How do we sustain this energy and momentum and continue our ascension? How do we tell the story of who we are, what we offer, and where we are going? It is time for us to build a stronger brand. We are on the cusp of a trajectory that can lead to our becoming the college of choice. We have a strong history of academic excellence, but in recent years we seem to have lost our collective voice and the nation has stopped listening. But our conversations across the country during the last year clearly indicate that we are on the right path for developing and implementing that which few have dared to do. And importantly, we're about to do it in a way that no one has yet to accomplish. How do we get the word out? Or as some say, how do we build a stronger brand? While you go out there, you hire a consultant who specializes in branding and marketing higher education institutions. And we are fortunate to have an alumnus who has one of the best such firms in the nation. The firm began its research and culled through the responses of more than 1,500 participants who represented prospective and current students, alumni, employers, faculty, and staff looking for answers. Thanks to each of you who took the time to participate in the research, there was an important component in shaping this marketing strategy for our college. You, our community, are helping guide exciting and meaningful curricular changes. You are the authors of and participants in our story, both then and now. Building an authentic brand platform will not be possible without your participation. So what was the research trying to determine? Essentially, the firm, known as Creative Communications Associate, or CCA, was trying to find answers to the following question. Who is St. Mary's College? And what do people think about the new framework? What did they discover? Well, what they found out, essentially, is that people couldn't come up with any distinctive academic traits about our college. And that this moniker we have, Honors College, resonated strongly with the external community, not so with our faculty and staff and some of our current students. That's troubling. But the good thing is that virtually everyone, especially students and, fa and families and employers, embraced the new programming framework that last year we referred to as Honors College 2.0. <clears throat> so it is time to tell people who we are and what we are about. The tide is turning. As we have seen with recent enrollment success, and the branding and marketing initiative will support our efforts further. Besides articulating in an authentic and compelling way our unique story, it gives us all a clear and consistent framework through which to share our story. It will help prospective students understand the value of choosing St. Mary's College over others. It will build pride among our alumni, encouraging them even to make even closer connections, making them more inclined to provide the support and assistance we need for our students and graduates. It helps our peers and influencers and people in the government and the state of Maryland recognize and value the unique position we offer in higher education landscape. Most of all, it helps 
us speak in one unified, consistent voice because ours is a remarkable story we're telling over and over. So what is the brand identity? And today is the soft launch. What's that mean? I'll just introduce it to you. Plant the seed, you start using the right word, and then in October, there's going to be a big blowout of all kinds of good stuff, and you come back to that. Is everybody feeling it? And so your friends and colleagues who are not here today, tell them. They need to be here in October. They now have another month and a half to figure out how to get here in October. Our new brand identity is St. Mary's College of Maryland, the national public honor college. We're only one of two public honors colleges in the nation. It is a position we have always held, but we never lifted it or embraced it. It is time to claim that designation, to own it, to proudly display it. And importantly, the honors concept resonates very well with prospective students. We must use it as a community, because that's what we are. We will use this position to build stronger wealth, awareness, and familiarity in a very crowded market, and our voices must be stronger and bolder to be held and attract the students. We need to learn how to talk about our teaching and learning that happens on this campus. They are the hallmarks of the National Public Honors College. The term, Honors College 2.0. How many of you have heard that term before? Well, if anybody's sitting in here, everybody should be having a hand to raise the dog. And I feel like I'm a professor, and nobody's paying attention to me. How many of you have heard of Honors College 2.0? What's it mean? Prestige. 
all students, not just those who have families to tell them you gotta take an internship, or you gotta learn how to write this way or speak that way. As a public institution, we are obligated, if we know that something is good, everybody should have access to it. And that is what Leap with an Edge is going to be about. Our third chapter, Uncommonly Worth It. That's about return on investment. People are always wondering, what do you get for that? We, got, we have high graduation rates. Our students graduate with low debt. We have high post-graduation placement. We'll give you stories to really enhance those points. But those are things that very few institutions in this nation can do, especially in the public sector or even in the private sector. We must be proud of that. Fourth one. Be here, be proud, be your best. I know there are a lot of words on here. What's that mean? I don't know. It means you must celebrate the setting in which we find ourselves. It is rich in history. And the history has part of it about being inclusive. Think about that. That is empowering. Because the country needs to be more inclusive. It is in, I hate when people say this, but they don't know what they're talking about. But they always say it's in our DNA. It's almost in our DNA. It's in our dirt. <laughs> so you guys need to celebrate that. We come from an inclusive, we were founded as an inclusive environment. We now call us to celebrate it and take it to a new level and to show the things that we do to remain an inclusive environment. And as we tell this story, we need to talk about its being tailored for you. It means that it is a personal, close interaction with their faculty and staff. It means that it is a rigorous environment, but it is supportive. And it means that it is an inspiring environment so that when you graduate from here, you will be that global citizen that we all talk about, ready to succeed in the world. So at this time, I want you guys to know that staff are going to pass out, is that right? Good. Staff are going to pass out this official pocket guide that outlines those key chapters that I talked about and some more information in there. And at the, while they're doing that, our Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Carolyn Curry, is going to come up and provide additional details. Now when you see Carolyn, you know how we take pictures and you see what people are wearing? Then you see the person and they're wearing the same thing? <laughs> what do you think about it? <laughs> so I wrote to that, the only reason I'm saying that is because today we took Carolyn's picture and that's why she has on the same clothes. <laughs> Thank you. 
get our college back on the national radar. So I want to thank you all again for your role in helping to articulate our new grant petition. And I really do need, when we talk about everyone needs to be on the same page, speaking with one voice, I'm very serious. Please, put those chapters in your brain. You don't have to memorize it verbatim, but you don't do too much ad lib. <laughs> you need to stay on the message. So if you forget something, ask your friend. Or if it's too much, put a cheat sheet on your hand. But this is the way by which we have to start talking about our college. St. Mary's College, we're ranked fifth best public liberal arts college in the United States by U.S. News and World Report. Is that important? Yes. Do you know that in the last three years, we have moved up four spots on the national list from U.S. News and World Report? And so, because I was nervous, because we dropped down to 99. Now, there are hundreds of liberal arts colleges, but what happens after you get below 100? Does anybody know? The families have to turn another page on page three. <laughs> They don't like that. So we have now gotten up to 95. We got a little bit of breathing, but do not breathe. <laughs> because you can slip. So we have work to do, and we appreciate your really helping us to keep on people's radar and to move to a higher level. You know, about a week ago, the college was named number 28 out of the Washington Monthly's top 30 liberal arts colleges in the nation. That's big for us. It's kind of a big deal because the Washington Monthly rates colleges not based on what they do for themselves, but rather on what they do for their country. If you look at all the institutions in the country that were really analyzed, St. Mary's made the list, we're in the top 28. You guys should be proud of that. Together, with each of us, St. Mary's College of Maryland is leading the way. We lead, capital L, capital E, yeah, capital A, capital E, <laughs> through our service. We lead through our passion. We lead through not trying to be like everyone else, but by simply being our best selves, our individual efforts, creating a collective whole that we are all proud to call our own. Thank you for everything you do. It is an honor to be here with you. I look forward to a productive semester and invite each of you to go out to the tent and partake in a reception. And just when you're out there, do a lot of inhaling because it's incredibly hot.